Today we're going to learn how to use dot product in Geometry Nodes, and we'll show you some examples. So let's see. So here I have a simple setup with two simple vectors. We have the blue vector, where here I can move it, is just a simple point with a sphere as instance connected with a curved line to this position and to the center of the wall. And the same with the red vector. So we can visualize better these two vectors. Now what I want is to bring dot product and see what it is. So let's bring vector math and leave it here. And select dot product. First of all, I want you to notice something. Look at the output. It says value. It's gray. That means that is a number of load. However, if we select something else, for example, this, you see is a vector or any normal vector operation. We always get a vector, except if we select that product. So what it gives you is not a vector. It's a simple float number, a simple value. Now let's connect this here and this here. And now let's try to visualize this value with a text. So let's convert this value to a string. Remember, a string is a text. And now let's convert the string to curve. String to curve. And let's connect it here. So now in theory, here we have the number. It says one. But let's give some mesh. So let's add field curve. And we can see one. What I want is to move it here. So let's add transform. I'm going to do a group of these. I'm going to select all these and this one and press Ctrl G. So I can work better here. And what I want is to move to rotate this number. So 90 degrees. And I want to center it. And I want to move it here. So I'm going to move this axis. And what I want is to show more decimals. So I'm going to click twice. OK, I'm going to press Tab to go out. So this is just to convert this value to a text. That's all. Now we can see the dot product between these two vectors. And we see this number. So let's try to move this and see and see which numbers we get more or less. So you can see that depends what we do. We get a random number that we don't understand what does it mean, right? However, we can see that now it's negative. OK, so to work better, I recommend you to normalize both vectors. So add vector math and select normalize. This is going to convert this vector to a scale of 1. And you have to do the same with this one. Why? Because doing this, it doesn't matter if you move one really far away, that always will get more or less the same number. For example, if I try to push this one, you will see that now it doesn't say something like three point, etc. If I mute this, you will notice that the number is really high. So always try to add normalize before the product. So we have this, and now what does it mean that? Basically, dot product, when you use two vectors, normalize, really important, it gives you a value between minus one and positive one. So whatever we change here, always will get this range of numbers. So why is useful to use the product? That product is useful to know the relation between two vectors. It tells you how similar two normalized vectors are. I repeat, how similar they are. And it's really easy. I will show you. I'm going to select 0, 0 and leave this one here. And this one, for example, here and here. So the important thing you have to know is three things. When the angle between two vectors is less than 90 degrees, then this number is going to be positive. Now, when the angle is higher than 90 degrees, then this number is going to be negative. And when the angle is exactly 90 degrees, then 
is zero. I repeat, if this is less than 90 degrees, it's a positive number. If it's more than 90 degrees, for example, 120 is negative, and if the angle is perfectly 90 degrees, then this value is zero. So let's check it. For example, if I select this in 90 degrees, so one value and this in zero, you can check that now this is perfectly 90 degrees, so equals zero. And if I move this in this axis, so this is less than 90 degrees, always is positive. However, if I move it in the other direction, so now it's more than 90 degrees, is higher, then the value is negative. And remember, always the range is between minus 1 and positive 1. So as you can see, I can move this in any direction. Remember, it's normalized. Then now, for example, it's giving almost 1. That always is going to give a number between this and this one. And if you want to get exactly 1, then what we have to do... So as you can see, when both vectors have opposite directions and the angle is perfectly 180 degrees, then the value is minus 1. However, if we match the direction, this will be the opposite will be perfectly 1, because we have 0 degrees. Now I'm going to use two entities to control these two vectors, so it will be much easier to move the vectors and see how this number changes. So here I have the two entities to control the blue one and this one. So remember, when they are not really similar in the directions, is basically negative. When they are really similar in the directions, so more or less are facing in the same direction, they are not, but this is telling you how similar they are. So that's why when they match almost, it gives you one. Now, when they match perfectly, it tells you it's perfectly similar. They are aligned. And if they are opposite, then it tells you with minus 1. So more or less, like now. By the way, here you have a GIF that shows you this relation with that product and two vectors. So basically, the dot product is a number of a relation between two vectors. And now maybe you are thinking, okay, but what I can do with this number? Well, you can use this number to create roots. So, depends if two vectors are really similar or not, you can decide to do an action. For example, let's bring a cube here. So, let's create a cube and connect it in joint geometry. And now, what I want is to scale this cube based in this number. So, let's add transform. And what I want. I'm going to move this here, is to get this number. Remember, this is just a text, but the important thing is this value, and I can connect it here. So now, if we move these vectors, you will notice that the scale is changing. What is happening? Basically, it's just sending this number to the scale of the three axes. So right now, when the vectors are aligned, the scale is 1. It's giving 1, 1, 1 in the three axes, almost 1. And when this is, for example, remember, 90 degrees, almost 90 degrees, that means that the scale is 0. So that's why it disappears. And if we move it in the other direction, the scale is inverted, minus 1. So it's reversed. If you don't want to reverse it, when they are opposite, what we can do is to adhere a map range. And if we add a map range, we are defining this range from 0 to 1. So we are deleting the minus 1. That means that now, when it's in the range of negative, it doesn't work. However, when we start being positive, so in this range, the minimum, start increasing to maximum 1. 
If you want to increase the scale, then you need to increase this value. This is like the maximum scale that it can achieve in this range. So for example, I can say five. So what I'm saying right now is that when the number is one, the scale is five. Let's see another example. For example, let's do a simple selection. Now I'm deleting this cube. But what I can say is only deleted, for example, when this is matching or they are opposite. So let's connect this here. And now if we move this, it's going only to delete when it's higher than zero. So let's check it. Why? Because remember, selections always is a Boolean. That means that always select what is higher than zero. So if the number is higher than zero, then it applies the delayed geometry. However, if you want to control this, what we can do is add here a math and select compare or greater than. So now what we're saying, for example, let's check it. Let's move this. We are saying only delete it when it's greater than 0 0.5. So this is like a filter, right? We get this value. And this is only selecting, only applying the delay geometry when this number is higher, greater than 0 0.5. So in this range, it's been delayed. However, when we cross the threshold, it appears. Because now it's less than this number. So we are creating a simple rule. If you want the opposite, so show it now and delete it when they are not really similar, then we have to select less than. So now we are saying delete the geometry when it's less than this number. So after this, or well, we could define, for example, zero. So if this number is less than zero, delete it. If not, appear. So as you can see, you can apply this to any selection. Okay, now I'm going to show you a better example because maybe you are thinking, okay, but I'm not going to use most of the time two vectors to do that product. So show me something more interesting because I see that some people use it, for example, in simulation nodes and all this. So let's delete this cube at an ecosphere. Let's go into here and add more subdivisions. And I'm going to delete one vector. For example, this one. Let's delete this and one empty. I'm going to stay only with one empty. So the important thing is this empty. Okay, this line is just to see the line from this position to the center of the wall. And now what I want is to get the normals of this object. Why the normals? I'm going to delete all this. Because remember, the normals are the lines perpendicular to every face, right? Every face have a normal. So these normals are directions, are line from the center. So we can compare this position, for example, with this normal. So this angle. So let's see it. Look. I'm going to use this empty and now call the normal of this geometry nodes that will be the normal of this icosphere. By the way, when we use a normal, we don't have to normalize it because a normal is already on a scale of one. So we can delete this. Now, as you can see, the text disappear. Why? Because now it's using the information of all the normals. So we don't have only two vectors. Now we have a lot of vectors and it's impossible that this node that is showing one text, do you remember, show now hundreds of texts. So that's why it disappeared and it show it in red. So now this doesn't work. This text only works with one value, not with hundreds of values. So a tip, when you see this type of lines with dash, that means that is more than one value. And this node, only works with one value. That's why now it's useless. So I'm going to delete this. And what is happening right now is that this position, this line, 
is being compared with all the vectors. And remember, we're applying, I'm going to move this here if you want, we're applying a delayed geometry. Remember, we have an ecosphere, okay? I'm applying this node, and I'm making a selection based in the dot product of this position and all the normals of the icosphere. And is delighting only this part. Why? And if I move this, look at this. Always, what is in front, what is aligned, similar, is being shown. But what is in the opposite direction is being delayed. Why? For the same rule that I explained you before. Because now we are saying delayed the geometry, so all the geometry of the icosphere, the faces, edges, points, etc., when the vectors with the normal are less than zero. Remember, the icosphere has a lot of normals. So I'm going to draw these normals, the ones that are being delayed. Now these ones disappear because the angle is higher than 90 degrees. So if it's higher than 90 degrees, remember when was 90 degrees was zero. When was higher than 90 degrees was negative. For example, here will be, I don't know, minus 0 0.8. And for example, here will be minus one, right? So with this rule, we are saying, A, every normal compared with this position that the dot product is less than zero, so all this range deleted. That's why the behavior is this, because it's comparing in real time with the normals of this object. But also we can change this. If you want to make it smaller, then let's increase this number. So, for example, let's say that every normal that the comparison is less than 0 0.9 deleted. So now it's only showing almost the normals that are really, really, really similar to this position. And we can decrease and show more. And if we select, remember, until minus 1 or more, then we are saying don't delete anything. Or we can do the opposite. Greater than. So now it's deleting all the faces that the normals are really similar to this vector. And I can say, for example, delete everything that is higher than zero. And this you can apply it in any selection. For example, let's delete this and apply a set material. Now let's select a material, for example, blue. And now let's connect it here. And it's the same. Now we are saying only show the material in the faces that the normal is higher than zero. So we created this effect. And I can reduce this range. By the way, if we add more subdivisions, we have more resolution. So as you can see, it has a lot of uses. I could be one hour explaining you a lot of examples, but don't worry, I will do more tutorials where you will see some uses of this dot product. At least you know how it works. So I hope you learned something new. And if you like this video, give a like, subscribe, and you can donate this project and many more on my Patreon. And see you in the next video.